This is the 10th episode of Anatomy and Physiology, so for your supplementary exam, I hope you have watched the previous videos as well, and so let's start. Okay, let's start with the first question. What are the functions of the urinary system? Does it involve in pumping blood around the body and carries away unwanted carbon dioxide? Does it facilitate gas exchange? Does it process food nutrients and regulating body metabolism? Does it regulate body fluids, removal of metabolic waste products, and excretion of toxins? There you go. Those are the two kidneys and the bladder. So the answer is regulation of body fluids, removal of metabolic waste products, and excretions of toxins. So the urinary system is also called the renal system or urinary, urinary tract system. It also regulates the blood volume and pressure in the body. There are two parts of the urinary system. They are the upper and lower urinary system. The upper part includes the two kidneys, and some people have just one kidney, and the ureter. And the lower part includes the bladder and the urethra. Next question. What is the product of heart rate and stroke volume? Is it the respiratory rate? Is it the cardiac output? Is it the stroke volume? Or is it the peripheral resistance? So the cardiac output is the answer. So cardiac output is the product of heart rate and stroke volume and is measured in liters per minute. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the ventricles with each heartbeat. Next question. What stimulates the release of glucagon from the pancreas? Is it the high levels of calcium in the blood? Is it the high blood pressure? Is it the high levels of sodium ions? Or is it the high levels of potassium? So the answer is the high levels of calcium in the blood. If the muscle f muscles fail to use glucose, it can lead to excessive sugar levels in the blood and a, and a condition called diabetes. Within muscle cells are stores of calcium that signals the muscle to contract. The changes in calcium levels enhance the uptake of glucose that fuel these contractions. Okay, next question. Where is the third ventricle of the brain located? Is it in the diencephalon, in the hindbrain, in the cerebral hemisphere, or is it in the arachnoid? And the answer is, it's in diencephalon. This, the third ventricle of the brain is a narrow funnel-shaped cavity that is located in the midline between the two hemispheres of the diencephalon of the forebrain, meaning it lies in the center of the brain. It makes up the central part of the brain and facilitates communication between other ventricles. Next question. What is the section of the lung that receives its own tertiary bronchus. Is it the pulmonary lo lobule? Is it the bronchopulmonary segment? Is it in the trachea or is it in main bronchus? So you can see that the um, tertiary bronchus there. And so the answer is in the bronchopulmonary segment. So a bronchopulmonary segment is a division of a lobe and each lobe houses multiple bronchopulmonary segments. Each segment re receives air from its own tertiary bronchus and is supplied with blood by its own artery. Next question, which part of the brain is responsible for reasoning, intelligence, and thinking? Is it the penile gland? Is it the medulla? Is it the cerebellum? Or is it the cerebrum? The answer is the cerebrum. 
Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain which is responsible for reasoning, intelligence, and thinking. It also initiates movement and regulates temperature. Other areas of the cerebrum enables problem solving, emotions, and learning. Okay, next question. Which is responsible for processing visual information such as movement of the eyes, focusing, dilatation of pupils, and visual reflexes? Is it the midbrain, the medulla, the forebrain, or the hindbrain? So the answer is the midbrain. Midbrain is part of the central nervous system, which is located below the cerebral cortex and the topmost part of the brainstem. It is small but plays an important role in the processing visual information such as movement of the eyes, focusing dilatation of pupils, and visual reflexes. Next question. What is the main function of the integumentary system? It gives the body the shape and allows for movement. It provides the body with protective barrier between the organs and changing outside environments such as heat. It sends oxygen and nutrients to all parts of the body. And it circulates hormones and essential substance in the organs of the body. So the answer is, it provides the body with protective barrier between the organs and changing outside environments such as heat. So integumentary system includes the epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, and associated glands, hair, and nails. It also provides the synthesis of vitamin D. Next question, where are the red blood cells formed? Is it in the nephrons of the kidney? Is it in the atrioventricular of the heart? Is it in the red marrow located in the vertebrae, sternum, ribs, and skull? Or is it in the bundle of his? And the answer is in the red marrow located in the vertebrae, sternum, ribs, and skull. So the red blood cell formation, and another name for it is erythropoiesis, it occurs in the red bar bone marrow located in those um, bones and it also it can be uh, located in the uh, pelvis and proximal limb bones as well. So it is the production of hemoglobin containing red blood cells for oxygen delivery to the tissues of the body. Next question. One of the functions of the muscular system is the body, body movement due to contraction of skeletal muscles, pumping of oxygen from the lungs to muscular muscles, maintaining blood pressure, or excretion of body fluids throughout the body? And the answer is body movement due to contraction of skeletal muscles. So muscular system is an organ system consisting of cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles, and smooth muscles. It is responsible for body movement due to the contraction of the skeletal muscles and also maintaining balance and posture and they also circulate the blood throughout the body. Next question, what are tendons? They are a bundle of white fibrous connective tissue that attaches a muscle to a bone. They are connective tissue that attaches bone to bone. They are short band of tough flexible fibrous connective tissue that supports an organ to keep in position or are they fibrous connective tissue that produce red blood cells as you can see in the photo they are bundles of white fibrous connective tissue that attaches a muscle to a bone so tendons are mechanical bridge it provides the transmission of muscle strength to the bones and joints. So this is the end of this video. Please like and subscribe or comment below so I can continue making similar videos to supplement your studies in anatomy and physiology. Good luck and thank you for watching.